That's right, everybody. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. This is a quick blast wherein it's only going to be available on YouTube. There's going to be no podcast version. It's going to be a little bit shorter, a little bit more to the point, and a lot of visuals that I can't really uh, put into a podcast form. So that said, I do appreciate you tuning in because this is a pretty important topic that we are seeing surface right now and the story is kind of unfolding and the moment that i heard about this some uh, of you had asked me to kind of look at the documents and so on that have surfaced online uh, analyze them are they real are they not so on and so forth they immediately rung a bell with me from something from years ago and it was not anything that of course i really wanted to do simply because i know the end but since I got quite a few requests here in the last 12 to 24 hours uh, since these articles have appeared and the documents are being circulated, decided to do this. Now, uh, what I want to do is just kind of go ahead and, and give a little bit of a background, background as I like to do. Uh, these are MJ-12 or Majestic-12 related documents. Many people dismiss that outright as a hoax just simply because of the outlandish and extraordinary claims that MJ-12 related documents make. But let's just go ahead and give it the benefit of the doubt and start analyzing some of these uh, pages to see exactly where we come up in the end. Now, if you're not familiar with the background, here it is in a nutshell. Uh, back in 2018, on January 28th, Dr. Hal Putoff, a name that you hear quite often, it's amazing how the same names keep appearing in stories like this, was being interviewed by George Knapp. His quote that really started kind of this uh, rumble through what people refer to now as UFO Twitter uh, is this. There has been one leaked document. How it got leaked, I'll never know. Which is out there that talks about some crashes that we were able to verify what was a real document. Now, that was the transcript. I know it's a rough read, but <laughs> I don't do Dr. Putoff's voice uh, or inflections, but that is what he said. Now, fast forward here to the last day or so, and I know there was talk online about, well, what document was he referring to? It's not like he showed everybody or linked it on his social media. Well, we'll just speed up the story and say that this is a four-page document that is rumored to be exactly what he was referring to. Now, it's nothing new. It's not anything that just came about. It's actually been around for quite some time. Uh, in fact, you can uh, test this out. Just Google any text that you see currently on your screen. But I put the URL at the above. It comes from a site called ufoconspiracy.com. So you'd think, you know, <laughs> you would be able to find this a little easier if that's what he was talking about. But Dr. Podoff never made reference to where you could find it. Well, here it is. You can see down here are four pages linked to the image files or JPEG files of those four pages. Now we know for uh, at least a couple of years, these things have been floating around. Uh, here was uh, one post on Twitter. All you gotta do is uh, search on Twitter for one of the URL addresses. And uh, this account was posting it in December of 2018. Again, just time stamping it that these documents are nothing new. They've been around for a couple of years at least. Uh, but I'll put up the argument they've been around for much longer. So that's uh, where the documents at least stem from and are rooted from. Now, Dr. Putoff was asked again uh, this year in February uh, the 8th, to be exact, when he was giving a lecture in West Virginia. This was during the Q&A session. Uh, the credit for this transcript is uh, to ufojoe.net. Uh, I believe I've mentioned him before. He does a lot of hard work transcribing lectures and Q&A sessions and so on. So credit to him for this. Uh, here's the quote. This is a question about a discussion. In fact, I guess I even mentioned it on an interview with George Knapp about a document leaking. That verified that there were, in fact, crash retrievals. I know it's out there on the Internet someplace. I'm not sure where. And so I don't know where you go could go look for it. Uh, well, that's kind of silly that uh, he wouldn't know, because on that website, ufoconspiracy.net, Dr. Putoff is a contributor. He apparently has written for them in the past. Now, somebody with a security clearance like we know Dr. Putoff has, if you write for a site called UFO Conspiracy, you might want to double check and do your homework on exactly what was on their website. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt, though, that it's not his website, or at least I don't think it is. 
he's just a contributor and he didn't know that it was on a website that he contributed to. So that's fine. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and move on and go back to that four page document, lining them all up. When I started creating this presentation to give the history, I noticed one kind of interesting thing. This was a document allegedly from 1961, from what we were told. And when you look at what I'm circling here on screen, the top secret Umbra, uh, Umbra stamps, or not really stamps, but where it's uh, uh, depicted here on the document on the top and bottom, putting them all up in a line, what do you notice? They pretty much are identical. They are spaced exactly alike. Now that could just be a coincidence or maybe a trick of the eye when I made this slide. So what I did, I'm gonna have to switch screens here, bear with me, bring up a Photoshop. Now, here's what I did, and I'm going to put it full screen for you guys so you can see. This isn't a Photoshop tutorial, so I'm not going to do it all again for you, but this is easily verifiable. What I did here was took all four pages and put them on a canvas, and uh, or excuse me, the uh, three of the four pages, reason being that three of them were the ones that had the markings. And essentially what I did was I put them on different layers, and I wanted to match up to see if they were exact. And as you can see here, when I pull all three documents into Photoshop, you can see by this top secret Umbra up here and down here, they match exactly to the pixel. Now, what you do is all you got to do is line up one. So you might have to, you know, nudge a few pixels to the right or to the left or up or down, but you put them all on top of each other and align that kind of guide point. And that became my guide point. Now, if they were exact, then these would match up exactly alike. If they weren't a match, then these would not match up exactly. And yet they did. Essentially what you're doing here with these three pages and then the fourth, what you see here is just the background. What I did here is essentially, it's like if you have three physical pieces of paper, you put them on top of each other and hold them up to a bright light. That way the light shines through everything and you can see if anything matches or discrepancies or so on. That's what I did here. So again, when you start taking the pages away, you see those, those top secret Umbra, they do not move a pixel because they are identical, like someone used a template. Now in 1961, we all know that Microsoft Word wasn't around or Word Perfect or whatever they may have used. So what's the deal there? Well, I challenged the theory. I brought up other documents. And what I did, here's a top secret document. I have sources in the description page for all of these. Uh, here, same deal. Start bringing in pages, match up the top, but the bottom doesn't align because it's not a template or the same. So match up the one, the other one should if it were the same. And obviously it's not. So you can see where the pages don't line up. Hard to see probably, but you'll see one starts over here, one starts here, one starts up here. Perfectly matched up top. That's your guide yet not here. Here's another one. Pull them in. I did five pages. There's one. Top secret Umbra. So now I'm trying to match exactly what the same classification is. Two, three, four, five. What do you notice? Line up the guide down here. No match. Close. That's what you would expect when people are typing or, or doing however they are marking these, uh, but, but not an exact match. One more for you, because I could bore you to death for hours. There's countless of examples. Three pages, top secret, line them up. What happens? Nothing, no match. Match up here for your guide, no match down there. But the original document, pull them back in, a 100% perfect match between this, that's three pages right there, three pages on top. It's perfectly matched to the top. Again, perfectly matched to the top. Before anybody attacks me, there's an explanation, I'm sure. And that actually comes from a man by the name of Richard Doty. Yes, that Richard Doty that comes up quite a bit in really controversial stories in the field of ufology. 
with any good document story, there's always these side pockets of information that go to explain anything like what I just brought up to you. And that information is the fact this document was retyped from the original. So now it's not original anymore, even though it's emulated to look like one, they simply retyped it. So that paves the way then for any skepticism or any document analysis or anybody who has any knowledge about 1961 classified information can then just go away because, well, that's easily explainable with the fact that it was retyped. And so let's not point any of that out. Let's just go ahead and move along. So let's do that. Let's move on. Let me give you something else. Now, I want to go back to this page and focus on this, which is the receive stamp on the top right corner. Now, when I saw this and it said July 21st, 2000, I know from experience uh, two things. Number one, that's not from any government agency, uh, at least not likely. Uh, and that coupled with the second thing that it rang a bell, that there is a man out there who stamps on the top right corner most of the documents that he received over the years. Who was that? His name was Timothy Cooper. He is intimately involved in the Majestic 12 documents and the whole story going back to the beginning. When he allegedly got multiple MJ-12 or Majestic 12 documents in the mail from uh, anonymous sources, he would put a stamp or sometimes even write on the document when he received it. Here's another one from his collection where he stamp received. Now, did you notice something else different? I mean, identical? The receive stamp July 21st, 2000, received July 21st, 2000, received July 21st, 2000. They're all identical. They're all the same. We also know that it's Timothy Cooper because here's his handwriting. Compare the T to his initial T, the C to his initial C on all the documents that I dug up and there's more. You can uh, look at them as well, but uh, obviously this is his handwriting. This is what he did. Now, why is it important that this is rooted with Timothy Cooper? Well, again, he's been involved since the beginning, but there's one very important point that happened in 2009 that no one wants to talk about if you believe in Majestic 12. That is, they're all fake and they're all a hoax. In response to Robert Hastings, another uh, great researcher, he published an article, was talking about hoaxes and MJ-12 and so on, I believe, uh, uh, in addition to Serpo, and that's another video in itself of hoaxed information that involve a lot of the same characters that we keep seeing over and over. In this email, Timothy Cooper told Robert Hastings, I read your posting, and as one who was foolishly taken in by the Majestic 12 fantasy, which is what it is, I heartedly agree with your assessment. Again, being a hoax, uh, tying in MJ-12 and Project Serpo and all of that. Speeding along in his letter to Hastings, he says, quote, The MJ-12 documents, and I mean all of them, including Special Operations Manual 1-01, are a hoax. And those who promote them as reality know this, or should know this. Now, this is important. Why? Because a lot of the newcomers in UFO land probably don't know who Timothy Cooper is, and yet he is the source of this document that has circulated yet again. It will probably circulate and for many more years to come. But the source, the real source of that document says that they are a hoax. Now, I reached out to Timothy Cooper for this. I wanted to see exactly what he had to say. Uh, How did he come to that conclusion? I didn't hear back. When I do, I am happy to publish uh, it if I do hear back from him. But that being said, these are his words. This happened in 2009, has actually been published in uh, at least one book that I have found and other articles as well. But Timothy Cooper has taken back the fact that he thought those documents were legitimate. He says they are a hoax. Now, can we believe him? Well, we believed him when he brought the documents forward. But he said himself he was foolishly taken in by the MJ-12 fantasy, which means that he admits he made a mistake. We all do. Uh, Me, Timothy Cooper, maybe a lot of you watching, maybe not some of you, uh, but me, definitely. But that happens. And so he's taken that back. So what are we left with? There's going to be a small group of people that will say, well, Timothy Cooper was pressured to say that. He was made to say that. 
They don't want him. He's too close to the truth. They don't want him talking about it. So he was forced. He was threatened. Where does it end with those types of claims? Only in ufology is a denial a proof of existence. Only in ufology does a, does a rather reasonable explanation, something that actually seems much more likely that is labeled as crazy. And the theory, the going theory then by those believers is it has to be a secret cover up of aliens and crash saucers that was revealed in the backseat of a car. I got a lot of flack by some. I was surprised, not more, but for some, for floating an idea that something put on paper was more creatively written rather than factual. And I was labeled crazy for thinking that because in exchange, they believe they were really talking about aliens, crash saucers, and a former uh, director of the Defense Intelligence Agency said bye bye to his security oath just to, to tell that story in the backseat of a car. It just doesn't make sense. Majestic 12, same deal. Somebody got taken in by the hoax and talked about it for many years. You know he did a lot of research on it, Timothy Cooper, for those that, uh, that know him. And yet after that, however many years of research, he finally said, you know what? I was taken in, but they are a hoax. But only in ufology is that part of the conspiracy and not taken as valid evidence. In the couple articles and blogs and stuff that I've seen published about these, as of the recording of this, I have not seen any reference to Timothy Cooper or the fact that he, he disavowed those MJ-12 documents, that very one that's being touted as real, not one mention at all. Now, why wouldn't Dr. Hal Putoff know this? Why, with a security clearance, would he acknowledge that top secret documents revealing alien existence, uh, the alien existence and crash saucers and retrievals and so on? With a security clearance, you can't do that. You can't say it's real. You likely can't say it's false. You just don't touch it. And that removes yourself from being in trouble. And yet he's willing to go on the record and say, yeah, that's floating out there in the ether. Have no idea why. Now I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, Dr. Putoff, and say, this may be not the document he was talking about. At least I hope not. Because if it is, and he says that there is truth to it, then he has a lot of explaining to do when the source of said record has already been labeled and admitted to as an elaborate hoax. That doesn't make sense any sense that he would do that. So until Dr. Putoff says, yes, that is the document, I'm going to withhold judgment on that and just say, if it is, there's a huge problem with its authenticity. Now I want to end with this. Debunking documents is not fun for me. I am a firm believer after 23, 24 years of doing this, that there is an active UFO cover-up. I put out the case in writing. I've done it in podcasts and radio shows uh, worldwide. Why I believe that is true. And that is backed by actual evidence, real evidence that I can give you uh, the provenance for. I can show you exactly how I got that information and you can get it for yourself. It's not fun for me to highlight things that are likely or a provable hoax. The last two videos posted on this channel, I've had to do just that. And of course, the flack comes. Now, I'm really surprised that I didn't get more flack for the last video I posted. And it's made its rounds. And of course, there's a small handful of people that hate me no matter what. And they will attack me, and they have. And they've posted their rude comments and snide remarks. And that's fine. I'm used to it. If I had a nickel, you know, I'd be rich. But that's going to happen. But I don't think that we need to do this anymore. We need to get beyond the fact that these documents that aren't even new, that have been around for years, it didn't take me long, even if I didn't have my bell rung when I saw Timothy Cooper's stamp, a little bit of research could have tied it back to him. And once it's tied back to him, it should be mentioned at least mentioned that Timothy Cooper says all that MJ 12 stuff, this included is a hoax. Why is that conveniently left out? And I don't understand 
There are 50,000 word blogs that are being posted that deal with this and other topics and so on, but are filled with like, I would say, imaginary filled in the gaps. And what I mean by that is if you believe this and you can only prove that, then the middle is just kind of all made up and fabricated. Sometimes I don't think people are maliciously doing it. I'm just saying that there's a bridge between what people want to believe and the evidence that is lacking. And so what they do is they fill in that gap in between. And that's what we have to get out of. Is there some secret organization that's Majestic 12 like that's operating in the government? Quite possibly. Is it called Majestic 12? Probably not. There is too much dirt and mud around these documents to support that they're real. As much as I love Stanton Friedman, he knew my feelings on this that I just wasn't convinced, nor were many. And when the source of the documents come out and says, I was duped, you need to look at that. The problem is no one will. They will omit that from their blog and keep that information from you. Now, if it is malicious, that's what they're doing and they should be called out. If it's not malicious, I hope in the future, people will take a little bit more time to explore the root of what they're looking at, the fact that it's not new, and the reality that the person who brought it to us said that it was a hoax. That is what we have to do if the field is going to move forward. Now, of course, I'll get attacked for the last three minutes of this, and people will not be too happy that I'm calling others out for not doing the proper homework. But you know what? We should all push each other to do more, more research and ask more questions. People get mad at me when I ask questions and I ask them over and over until they're answered. And just because they're answered doesn't mean it was wrong to ask the question in the first place. We need to push for those answers because something this important, this extraordinary needs that fine tooth comb. And if you think just adding in MJ-12 documents to the mix is somehow going to support anything else that's going on this day and age with UAPs and UFOs, I guarantee you, you're wrong. The MJ-12 documents should not recirculate as being real. And if they are, they need something to go along with it. But I'll let you decide. That's my two cents. This is John Greenwald Jr. signing off. We'll see you next time.